Gary, how are you doing? I'm very well, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Right, I'm, asked, I'm asking this question on behalf of someone who couldn't be at the con today. Uh, with the Beast Wars 15th anniversary, uh, Honest, what are you doing to celebrate? <laughs> what am I doing to celebrate the 15th anniversary? Yes. Of Beast Wars? Yes. I'm celebrating it right now. <laughs> don't go to very many uh, conventions. I think I can count the number of uh, Transformers conventions on two hands. I think I've been to eight, maybe seven. I just don't go to many of them. Uh, they're a lot of fun, but this one, I, I particularly like this one that comes out here in Mississauga. I, I like the fellows who run it, and uh, uh, this is a Good way is any to celebrate the 15th anniversary of Reboot. Or, uh, uh, <laughs> hey, I gotta tell you, Reboot, I've got Reboot on my mind because Reboot just they, they came out with a box set. Yeah! Just a few months ago. And I thought, well, it's a well. Because they've been quibbling and quibbling for years. They should have brought it out years ago to bring out Reboot because it's a, a fantastic show. And, uh, and the Beast Wars, the new Beast Wars uh, iteration, the uh, box set, I hear they don't sell it in Canada, they only sell it in the States. Boo! Boo! Anyway, does that answer your question, sir? It does. Thank you so much. I don't think we should go in there. I don't know if we go in there. Oh, what do you mean? We should go in there and be going. What? <laughs> no, we can't go in there. I was scared of him. He's so slow, but he's so loud. No, let's go in because I really like the menu. You don't want to get the menu. No, no, no. Oh, oh, darn. The door's locked. The door's locked. I'll open it. Well, just push the button. <laughs> oh, come on. Push the button. Push the button. I don't want to push the button. What? Go there. <laughs> I want to. I don't want to. What? You push it. No, you push it, because every time we push it, something bad happens. I go, why did it gonna kill us? <laughs> it's, a hundred, it's $140, Christina. I can't get it. But since you're not here, I can troll you with it. Ooh, look at the shockwave. You can't have the shockwave, Christina. You can't have it. <laughs> Don't, I, I, I'm teasing my friend. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm not doing it to be mean. Okay, maybe I am. I watched as a sort of adult and really enjoyed was Beast Wars and you know got to write a bit more so you know I've got great affection for it and I'd love to do something more but I did feel with Beast Wars that we should tie in ourselves to the TV show that we should be part of that canon and continuity so yeah I would say anything I'd want to do would still fit within those parameters. Thank you. Is it Ixaron or Zaron or... No, no, it's all. It's definitely Zara, you've got it right. I mean, All right, thank you, you know. very much. <laughs> and the record for the Whatever shortest question now. in existence. <laughs> <laughs> Never question someone in a black arachnid. Oh, okay. Um, okay, my question is uh, regarding the Transformers comic series starting at number 81. Will you be uh, at any point touching back upon the storyline of uh, of the last Autobot, or, or or how how Prime was kind of you know how he died, but then he came back as he was a high cube, but then he kind of got transmorphed into the new Prime. Like anything going to be revisited there? Yeah, this is this is exactly the thing I can't talk about at the moment. <laughs> but, you know, but, I mean, all I can say is that you know my ideal by the time we get to a hundred is that no plot thread, no character, no anything from the first eighty issues is left unexplored or unanswered or unfinished in some way. So, you know, I think you can count as rope that a lot of the characters that were around in the last ten or so issues are going to feature heavily in it. Okay. Awesome. Thank you.
All right, just uh, wait, hopefully this isn't uh, too much of one. Uh, this is more related to, I guess, derivative uh, work that we inspired. Lately, we've seen a lot of books uh, coming out from uh, Nick Roche and James Roberts, who are both UK creators who are heavily inspired by your own work and who've uh, you know, injected their own dash into a lot of recent stuff. What's your thoughts on this starting to happen with Transformers Fiction, with stuff directly being inspired by you making it in there? And uh, have you read it, and what do you think of it? Well, I mean, I, I, I'm a great admirer of Nick and James's work. I mean, I think they're, they're doing an amazing job. I mean, I thought Last Stand of the Reckless was, you know, one of the best things IDW's produced for a while. And, you know, that's no sort of slight on the other writers. I just think it, you know, sort of it kicked ass in all the right ways. So, <laughs> and, you know, and what, and what I like about you know, both Nick and James is that they take, you know, I mean, they both grew up reading my stuff. You know, I mean, Nick embarrassed me incredibly last time by telling me that his mum used to read my UK Transformers stories to him, which made me feel about 90. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but they're both, you know, I mean, they grew up with it. They love it like, you know, you guys that maybe love the cartoon or the American comic book. You know, it was, they, they had, it was what fed them when they were young. And both James and Nick do that nice trick of kind of being referential and reverential to that stuff, but putting their own kind of mark and spin on it. So, you know, I thought James's first issue of The Ongoing was amazing, you know, yeah. you know starting yeah. it in the Caddams for a start. And, you know, and it's just so laden with stuff that, you know, if you know it, you'll pick it up. If you don't, it doesn't get in the way of the story. So I think that's the yeah. kind of strength that, that both of them bring to it. I hope, you know, I might get a little sort of the folder created by it, buried at the bottom of the credits, but... Uh, yeah, I was looking for that, yeah. But it wasn't to be. You know, but in, you know, in a way it's a flattery that, you know, characters that both Bob and I created have, you know, found their way, or characters that even sort of, you know, F facets of storylines have made their way into the movies. You know, Bob was very chuffed that there's a space bridge in uh, Dark of the Moon. You know, and he was the sort of originator of the space bridge. And then so, a different space bridge in Revenge of the Fallen. Yeah, so, you know, so, so, you know, I mean, I think we can all say, well, great, we've, you know, every writer who's written for Transformers has contributed something to the, the mix that has become the movies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think we can take that out of it. But no, I've had, you know, almost zero direct input into the movies. Okay. Um, so Asbro came up with Revenge of the Fallen toys for Mind Wipe and Bludgeon. Now, do you know if that was influenced by the fact that in War Within, those two were acolytes of the Fallen? And if so, any indication of Bugly showing up? You, know, you need to direct that question to that? at um, the movie writers, because okay. I, I obviously don't know how much they even know or care of what I did or, you know, in my stories, but, you know, I mean, it feels to me that they, you know, done more than just dip into the ultimate guy. You know, I feel that, you know, things are creeping in more and more that, you know, I mean, they've looked at the whole kind of tapestry of it and drawn, you know, bits that they want to feature. So, you know, it seems, I mean, I didn't know until I met them that Bob Ford and Larry Dottilio, the, story, the Peace War story editors, had read my G2 stuff and that the the bop were some kind of, you know, future progression of the swarm from G2. Right, so, right. you know, you never know what influence is creeping in. Cool. Uh, Maybe Jet Judo, I don't know. They just, they, they did that for that character, so the brother Sunstreaker. <laughs> I don't know, I just figured out that good. I think we do like, you know, all the crazy techniques. <laughs> Alita One, this is really cool. The female characters were handled um, very well. So she was handled uh, like Chung Lee on it. This is the best.
Best game ever. <laughs> Sorry for Starscream. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> How is this fair? Decepticon, so Megatron. Megatron obviously is going to have this. 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 Sound wave. Now you have to fight. <laughs> so of course, when we're talking minions, of course we have Buzzsaw. <laughs> The whole thing oh my there. god. And then take God. And then take her with some reason. 